morning to you on this lovely crisp morning, beautiful morning, but winter is still here. So welcome to you, to those on social media, welcome to you. Uh, we excited to move on to what God is saying. Let's pray together and then we'll start. Father, this is the day that you have made. And your word says we need to rejoice in you in this day that you have made. So our hearts are full, full of rejoicing because we serve a God that is alive. We serve a God that lives within us and that we can have fellowship with. So thank you that today as we enter into your word that you will speak to us and as we pray every week probably that you will change us so that we can move into the fullness of what you're doing right now and the fullness of your plan for the church. That's our prayer this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning I want to start with a word that God gave me a few years back and uh, he said to me a while back that uh, this word is for now. So I'm going to share this word with you and then we're going to go into the message. Matthew 9, 37, 38 Then Jesus said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. John 4, 35 Do you not say there are yet four months? Then comes the harvest. Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. This is the year of harvest. I have prepared a harvest for you this year. And if you trust me and remain in relationship with me through faith and will pray and obey me by bringing in the harvest, there will be fullness of joy in this house. When I was lifted up on the cross, they placed a sign above my head that read, King of the Jews. When I am lifted up in your midst as the King of Kings, I will draw many to myself. I have not called you only for your people, for your culture, and for your community. I have also called you to reach the nations to the ends of the earth. Out of an intimate relationship with me, you will know my heartbeat and share my passion for the nations. This relationship will be your motivation for involvement in my kingdom plan. You can only enter and remain in me through faith. Walk in faith. Faith is not the denial of facts. Faith is the acceptance that I am in complete control. To walk in faith is not an effort of believing. It is a genuine trust that I am God. My grace is released through faith. My love is released through faith. My power is released through faith. My fruit is produced in your life through faith. My gifts are released through faith. Through faith you will walk in the miraculous and you will see the manifestation of my Holy Spirit power in this year like never before. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. I have called you to be a praying church. You will see many answers to prayer being fulfilled in this year. As you pray for the salvation of loved ones, I will answer you. As you pray for the miraculous intervention of my Spirit, you will be amazed at what I will do for you. Prayer will be the key to unlock the storeroom of my resources for you. Out of prayer, I will also raise up people from this church to go forth and bring in the harvest. I have not called you to build my church. I will build my church. I have called you to attack the gates of Hades and take my kingdom of light into places of darkness. I will release my Holy Spirit power upon you in a new and fresh way. Now arise and shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Go forth and I will enable you to speak my word with boldness. I will stretch out my hand to heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders through the name of my Son Jesus Christ. I am sending you, because how can they call on me when they have not heard? How can they hear without someone preaching to them? I will take the impossible and make it possible. 
I will take the inferior and make it superior. I will take the unworthy and make it worthy. I will take the weak and make it strong. I will take the foolish and make it wise. I am the God that takes that which seems to have no value and I make it valuable. I have chosen and prepared you for a time such as this. It is not about you. It is about my plans that I have prepared before the creation of the earth. Do not neglect the days of small beginnings. This is the word that God gave me many years back. And he said, now is the time for the fulfillment where I'm going to bring this word into fulfillment. Now, Reinhardt and myself, we had the, the privilege of being in Lesotho this weekend, Friday and Saturday, ministering to our students, teaching our students. And as I was teaching the students, I... God started speaking to me, so when I got back and Madeleine said, do you have a good time? I said, yeah, I had a good time. I'm not sure about the students, but I had a good time. Because God spoke to me again, and He, and he brought me back to the basics of certain things that He spoke to us over the years. So, let me start off with just with a, with a, with a story. Many years ago, there was an English-speaking family that came to Kainos, the Tater family. The father's name was Dick. Dictator was the kind of guy you'd like to have for a neighbor, but yet at the same time, when you worked with him, you discovered that it was his way or the highway. He always needed to get in the last word, and he always expected that you would go along with what he had to say. Not very surprisingly, because opposites attract, Dictator married a woman whose name was Hezi. Hesitator was the kind of woman who again got involved in ministry within the church. The problem was she could never make up her mind about anything. She was always deferring to her husband. Now Hezi was that way, but I remember more clearly their daughter. Her daughter's name was Emma. Emma Tater used to dress like everybody else dressed. She was very subject to peer pressure. She always waited for other people to make the decision, decision sorry, so that she could copy them. But to, the one who gave us the most trouble was their son, Adji. Agitator was a real piece of uh, was a real piece of work, I have to tell you. Agitator would do everything that he could possibly do to defy people to make life difficult. He was not your model Sunday school boy. As a pastor you try to fi figure things out and you try to understand why this family is the way it is. And I never could understand it until I met Dick's father. Dick's father used to come in late and he would always sit in the balcony. He'd come a little late and have the option of leaving early. His name was Spec. Spectator was never involved. He was the kind of person who criticized what was happening and would always go to church hoping that he'd get something out of it. But he never cared whether he put anything into it. Well, that was the Tater family. Now, <laughs> I have to ask you, what's your name? <laughs> Are you Dick? Are you Essie? Are you... Uh, Emmy, are you edgy or are you spectator? If someone would ask you as you came through the door, why does Kainos exist? What is the reason for Kainos, for our existence? What would you answer me? <coughs> I think we might get a variety of different answers. One will say to share the gospel of Jesus with the lost. Another will say to be mission focused and active. Another would say to make a difference in our community. 
to bring hope to the hurting, to be a lighthouse in a dark world, to collectively worship God, to pray together, to hear from God through the public preaching of His Word. Many reasons. And these reasons are all valid reasons. And Kainos does all these things. But what is the reason for our existence? And I sat last night <clears throat> asking God, what is the reason for our existence? And the reason for our existence is actually just our vision. To equip and empower our people to go and obey. To equip and empower our people to go and obey. While I was in Lesotho teaching our students, we were, we were the fourth and fifth years we were teaching on the mission of church. And uh, obviously, as you teach, you've got to just reflect where we are because we can't teach out of a position and say we're the perfect church so we will come explain to you how it must be done and i was thinking over the years as i was busy teaching i was thinking over the years how we have focused and moved towards becoming a church that will reach out a church that is a body of christ but the body of christ is not made up of a pastor full stop or pastors full stop but that the body of Christ is made up of many different people different places different functions and that's what makes the body uh, healthy so God just took me back to Ephesians 4 verse 10 to 16 <clears throat> He who descended is also the one who has ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. He's speaking about Christ. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. For what reason? For the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ, from whom the whole body join, the whole body join and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. So I took that and that which is, uh, was uh, uh, underlined there, I just brought it together. And the pl God placed Kainos in Frankfurt for the equipping of the saints he gave, sorry, he, he gave apostles, prophets, uh, uh, evangelists, uh, pastors or shepherds and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry according to the effective working by every part, by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. <clears throat> now as I go through this message, and let me first get to the next point, and then I'll, I'll tell you what, what I wanted to tell you. Yeah, go back, back. Uh, yeah, forward, Dallas. God has given to the body of Christ apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers, which they're the leaders in the church. Okay? The reason why God gave them is to equip. Next one. For equipping. So, our role as leaders is to equip. So, the first thing we've got to ask ourselves uh, is 
Are we doing a good job of equipping? Because if we're not doing the good job of equipping, nothing else falls into place. So that's, a, that, that, that's all the fingers pointed to us saying, where are we in this, in this whole story? Are we busy equipping? And so we, we have over, uh, over time, we have <clears throat> had different ways of trying to equip. Obviously on a Sunday morning, we equip. We have our Bible school, which is a major time of equipping and we enjoy that. And I'm sure the students also enjoy that the Bible school year, but we also equip all over. We equip in, in, in the prison, we equip in, 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 in the city where we just came from this weekend, equipping. But who do we equip? The saints. <laughs> there we go. The saints. Now just look at yourself and smile and take your fingers and point to yourself and you say, hey, I'm a saint. <laughs> now, some of you, you, you're scared to do that. Eh? <laughs> I'm a saint. You're a saint. <clears throat> saints are not the perfect people. Saints are those that are born again. If you're born again, you're a saint. So, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, teachers, our job is to equip but who do we equip? The saints. And why do we equip the saints? For the work of ministry. So, whose job is it to do the ministry? The apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, teachers, or the saints? Okay. I see you, you're scared to react because you're scared God's going to say, no, why aren't you doing it? Okay, or something like that. But uh, the apostle, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, teachers out of this scripture is equipping the saints so that the saints can do the work of the ministry. And all these pictures was last night when everybody else was sleeping. Okay. The saints has to do the work of the ministry. And so when we were driving back, we were talking and I said to Reinhardt, because we were teaching these things. And I said to Reinhardt, you know, Kairos is involved in lots of places. We're involved in Lesotho, we're involved in Frimpent in the prison, we're involved in the prison here in, in, uh, 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 in Frankfurt. Uh, we're involved in Namahadi uh, with the children in Namahadi and uh, uh, Joshua and, and, and uh, Momsi uh, and their team, uh, they, they have up to 80 children on a Sunday. Every Sunday after the service, they go there and then they have the children there. And there's over 80 children. And we're involved in many places. The big question is, who's doing the work of ministry? At the moment, it's the apostles, the prophets, evangelists, shepherds and teachers doing all the work. So somewhere we missed it. Even though we can boast in a, in a good way, not, not a necessarily arrogant way, but we can boast of we involved all over, but all over is where apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, teachers. But uh, th that's not totally true because there are, there are of you that are involved where you are. Uh, uh, there's Vessel and Esti that's, that's working with, a, with a, a agricultural students and, and building into their lives and, and, the, and the, the ministry with the Amos, Amos, Amos uh, ministries, etc., etc. And there's others involved all over. Uh, so I'm, I'm not saying this to put you into a position where you say, oh, we're all bad. That's not what I was trying to say. I'm just trying to get us back to the picture of what God called us to. And that's why I read this, this prophetic word. Because Jesus said, I have not called you to build my church. I will build my church. I have called you to attack the gates of Hades and take my kingdom of light into places of darkness. 
So if we are the light, then part of our calling is to be equipped so that we can take the, the light into dark places. And some of the dark places in your life could be in your business, could be in, on your farm, could be uh, where you work, could be in different places, could be in the school. We need to take the light there, but we need to be equipped to be able to do that. Um, <clears throat> so, God took me back to a, a message I preached, and I'm not preaching the same message, I'm just using the title. Uh, uh, even though it wouldn't matter if I did preach the same message, but uh, many years ago I preached this message. And it comes from Luke 9, verse 12 to 17. Jesus is uh, busy teaching people all over. <clears throat> and uh, in verse 12 of Luke 9, it says, now the day began to wear away. And the twelve came and said to him, Send the crowd away to go into the surrounding villages and countryside to find lodging and get provisions, for we are here in a desolate place. So the disciples come and they say, We've got a problem. But we don't have a solution. The problem is, there's a lot of people. The problem is there's no shops close by. So we need to send them home so they can go eat. Otherwise we're going to have a few people fainting around us. We've got a problem. Jesus, do something. But we'll tell you what to do, Jesus. Send them away. Just get rid of them so that we don't have a problem anymore. Get rid of the problem. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. But Jesus said to them, You give them something to eat. Now, there are many problems around us. The problem might be one of your employees that is going through a very difficult time in their marriage or the, whose child is sick or 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 your, your problem the problem could be that there are people with needs and we say go just uh, lord let's just send them away so they can go sort out their needs because god has placed us all in this world we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Uh, so God has placed us in places where He puts opportunities in front of us every day. We don't see them. And when we see them, we send them away. <laughs> and so uh, God is challenging us to become a church again that is not so focused on oh we've got a problem let's call the pastor won't you just please go pray for that person and so if you call me and you find me rude it's not really rude okay so if you call me and I tell you you say oh, We've got a problem with one of our employee, employers, uh, employees, they, they're struggling in their marriage, or they're struggling, whatever, whatever. Uh, 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 one, can I send them to you? And I say, no. And you're going to say, now what do we pay our pastor for? Okay, I know you won't do that because you're Titus. I'm preaching now to the other churches. Uh, but you, you, you will say, uh, oh, your reaction will be, oh, 
And my reaction will be, you the saint. And I think you're equipped enough to handle it yourself. Because God didn't call me to handle your employees. God didn't call me to handle your family. God didn't call me to handle the people that you involved in. God called you. Do something about it. Be light in the darkness. Don't send them away. Just be light in the darkness. Now, I don't know if I will really react that way, but I will try. Because we are all, that's who we are. Rick Warren told a story that one of his, one of his uh, elders <clears throat> was sick in hospital and actually he was dying. And so he decided, I, I, I need to go and, and visit him. So he went to the hospital and he came to the, 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 hospital, the front of the hospital and he said, I'm here to visit Mr. So-and-so. And, and the, the head nurse or whatever said, now, now, who are you? He said, I'm the pastor. And they looked at him and they said, really? There's already five pastors that came past already saying they're all the pastors. And so when he eventually got in, his member was laying there and there was a group of people, his friends, and they were pastors, they were not ordained pastors, they were not, but they were the pastors because they were the shepherds that came to shepherd him through this last part of his life. And he's laying there and Rick Warren says, when he walked in, this man looked at him and he said, oh, hi, pastor. What are you doing here? And he said, I, I, I've, I've come to pray for you. He says, no, you, you don't need to. I've got enough people praying for me. Shouldn't that be the body of Christ? But the body of Christ has turned around because uh, the church has, has got a, a, a religious mindset of Whatever your problem is, call the pastor. So I'm, I'm so glad I've, I've explained this over and over again. I'm not a pastor. I don't have the pastoral heart. So don't call me, okay? God has called me apostolically. So, uh, but uh, listen, as, as I read further, Jesus said, you give them something to eat. They said, we have no more than five loaves and two fish. Unless we are able to go and buy food for all these people. For there were about 5,000 men. Now you must understand, if there's 5,000 men, there's probably 5,000 ladies. Maybe even more, because you know. There's always more ladies than men. The men won't go, but the, the ladies go. But let's just say 5,000. Then there's 10,000 people. And then there's still children. So there was a few people. And he said to his disciples, have them sit down in groups of about 50 each. And they did so. And had them all sit down. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven. Uh... And uh, my, I see my, let, let's go here because suddenly there's some words out of my notes, not there. Uh, and taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing over them. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. And they all ate and were satisfied. And what was left over was picked up 12 baskets of broken pieces. Someone said once that it is true that most people would like to serve God. 
but in an advisory capacity only. And God has called us to serve Him, not to tell Him what He must do. So, the first point, and uh, uh, Jesus does not ignore needs. Jesus does not ignore needs. He sees a need and He doesn't ignore it. Uh, Luke 4 verse 18 to 19 The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me, Jesus says, to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And I want to say to you today, Jesus always has a solution for the needs of others. And the solution is you. You the solution. We're always thinking Jesus has got a solution. He's gonna He's gonna pour out of heaven the answer. No. He, God so loved the world, He gave His Son so that His Son could die, so that we can be born again. And if we're born again, we become the solution to the problems around us. And God wants to use you. He does. I'm not saying He doesn't want to use me. Of course, He He uses me, and of course, He uses Raynard, and of course, He uses Joshua Demu, and of course, He uses all of us. But but He wants to use you. And now, everybody, not everybody, many you sitting here and you're going, oh, He's going to put a heavy on us now. Um, you're right. <laughs> okay. Um, I want to put a heavy on you, but not a heavy that you can't do, a heavy to say, hey, I can also be used by God. I'm also okay, and some people say, but I'm not that spiritual, I'm not, uh, you can be used by God, because Jesus does not ignore needs, and he needs you to answer it. And then the next point, Jesus gives the instruction to his disciples. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up to heaven, thanked God for them, broke them, and gave them to the disciples to distribute to the people. Jesus didn't say, okay, break, let's come fetch, come fetch, come fetch, come fetch. He gave it to his disciples and he said, you can't believe how, what, where, but let me show you take this and he broke it and he gave it to them to dis distribute <clears throat> and Jesus gives the instructions to his disciples Jesus doesn't say watch me do this okay you already watch watch this miracle he doesn't do that he says I will do the miracle but you will spread the miracle I will do the miracle, but you will distribute the miracle. I've already done the miracle, but I, but I want, I need you to take the miracle now to the people. You understand? That's, that's why we on earth. And it doesn't matter where you are. If you're living in South Africa, if you're living in, 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 in Africa, if you're living in Europe, if you're living in wherever, if you're living in Ukraine and you're struggling uh, through this war, if you're living in Russia and you're part of the war, if you're living in, in uh, China, uh, 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 doesn't matter where you are, Jesus said, I've already done the miracle. I need you to distribute my miracle now to the people. Okay, that's good preaching, even if it's just for me. Okay. Uh, in Matthew, Matthew 10, verse 7 and 8, Jesus says, As you go, as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you have received, freely give. <clears throat> at our a Bible school on, on, on uh, Wednesday, uh, Erica told us that God spoke to her about we've got everything 
He's given us, we don't see miracles because we're not going. Mark 16, verse 15 to 18. Jesus said to them, Go into all the world. Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. Okay, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands, but, but I want to ask you, do you believe? <laughs> because if you don't believe, you condemn. So are you condemned or are you a believer? So if you believe, the Bible says these signs will accompany you. <clears throat> In my name, they will cast out demons. I, 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 I smile sometimes when, I, when we talk about anything about demons and the Christian says, just don't bring it close to me. Just, just, just keep me away. Man, if you believe, Jesus says, you will cast out demons. And, and, and Jesus might just send a demon-possessed person to you to distribute his miracle. Uh, he says, and they will speak in new tongues. And they will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. It doesn't say go drink the poison. It actually means if someone gives you poison and you don't know, it will do nothing to you. If a serpent comes and, and bites you, it will do nothing to you. And we read that about Paul later. Um, <clears throat> It will not hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Why don't we see these miracles? The reason is we don't see these miracles anymore because the church believes if you're sick, you must come to the church. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says the, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, uh, pastors, teachers will equip you to do the work of the ministry and then he says you go you don't bring them you go to them did you know that we can we can have the biggest best show here we can have the the, the best worship team we, we close there uh, uh, we, we can have we can have the, the best preacher we very good no, no, I'm joking but uh, we, we can have lights we can have all these grand things to attract people the worst sinner will still not walk in here the hurting person will still not come because we can't attract the sinners to church because that's not biblical and what has the church done the church has done all these amazing things to attract the sinners in the meantime Jesus said here's the answer go to the sinners okay. go uh, <clears throat> uh, Jesus does not say this for pastors or for the very spiritual but for those who believe do you believe if you believe these signs will follow i believe but i'm not i'm I, I, i'm not there yet then you don't believe and then you condemn that's what the scripture says if you believe you, are, you believe you are saved if you don't believe you are condemned so if you believe oh, but i'm still struggling with certain things he doesn't say if you stop struggling he says if you believe it's very simple. Let's just stick to the word. If you believe, this will, will follow you. Okay, Matthew 28 verse 19, we know, Go therefore and make disciples of, the, of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, <coughs> and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And this cough just, this cough came from the Sutu, and uh, because I went, okay? And now they don't cough anymore, so that, that's okay. Um, <laughs> The disciples focused on what they did not have, but Jesus spoke, uses what is available. But he said to them, 
you give them something to eat. They said, we have no more than five loaves and two fish. You give them something, we, we don't have enough. Jesus doesn't focus on what we don't have. He focuses on what we do have. And what we do have, He will use. And we do have relationships with people. And we do have friendships with people that are struggling. And we do have, we have so many things. And so we need to come back in Kainos. We need to come back to the original plan that God had for Kainos. Which was that we need to equip the saints so the saints can go out and do. Uh, you might say, uh, I'm not... I'm probably not the one because I'm not equipped enough or I'm not uh, 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 spiritual enough or I don't have enough knowledge or whatever. And then Jesus comes, or oh, Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 1, he says, but God chose what is foolish. So if you're feeling foolish, you're the perfect person. God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak. If you're feeling you're too weak to do this, God is saying you're the one because God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. All he's asking is, what do you have? Just use what you have. And Jesus multiplies what we have. <clears throat> And then just to come to an end uh, today, use every opportunity that God puts on your way. Use the opportunities. Col Colossians 4 verse 5 in the NIV says, Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. <clears throat> Make the most of every opportunity. In the Amplified it says, Conduct yourselves with wisdom in your interaction with outsiders, non-believers in, in brackets. Make the most of each opportunity, treating it as something precious. The Amplified says, every opportunity is something precious. Because Jesus said, I've done the miracle. You need to take the miracles and distribute the miracles. That's what he said. Ephesians 5 verse 5 to 17 in the NIV. Be ca very careful then how you live. Not as unwise but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish but understand what the Lord's will is. Using every opportunity that God gives and sends you to. And that's where the church becomes church. We all understand that all over the world, the church is declining. The church is becoming smaller. People are leaving the church. After COVID, so many people left the church that the, some churches had to close. How will, the, how will we enhance the kingdom of, of, of God? How will we, not by having good pastors, not by having good preachers, not by putting ourselves on television so we can preach to many more people. No, no, no. The only way that the kingdom of God will be enhanced is when the body of Christ wakes up and says, let's go do what God has called us to do. It actually means every day when you wake up, you should pray. God, this is a new day. I'm available. Use me however you want to, wherever you want to. And keep my eyes and ears open so I can hear your voice and see the opportunities where you want to use me. Take of advantage of each day and the opportunities that present themselves as if it were the last day in your life. Don't waste. Don't waste an opportunity. Once it's gone, it can never be retrieved. 
And then a spiritual adventure in God's will is determined by the opportunities we seize. We seize. So the question I want to ask you to end off, listen to this question and think about it. If everybody in kindness, if everybody in our church was like me, this is the question you ask yourself. If everybody in Kainos was like me, everybody, what would our church look like? If everybody was made up like you, if everybody thought like you thought, if everybody did as much as you did in the church, what would this church look like? J. Hudson Taylor, he was a missionary to China, big revival in China years back. He said, God said to me, I'm going to evangelize China, and if you will walk with me, I will do it through you. I want to say to you today, God said to me, and God said to us, I'm bringing revival to Frankfurt. And if you will walk with me, I will do it through you. Please don't hear this message with a wrong heart. Just open up your heart and say, God, I need to repent. Or maybe you should say, God, thank you that you've, you're using me Thank you that there's opportunities that you use me in. But I want to be more useful for your kingdom. I want your word. I want your love. Our, our mission to touch people's lives with the love of Jesus Christ. The mission of people in kindness. To touch people's lives with the love of Jesus Christ. I want to be that one that takes your love and through my hands and through my life to touch people's lives with your love God you don't have to go to Bible school now <coughs> that I've told you this you, the, the average and I'm going to stop now but let me just say this to you the average Christian in kindness the average Christian in kindness has got enough knowledge or not, has got more knowledge than the average pastor in Africa. You have got more knowledge than the average pastor in Africa. Don't say we're not equipped. We just need to be available. Let's pray. Father, this message was not to bring anybody into condemnation. This message was not to bring anybody to a place where they feel, I've missed it and I'm bad and I'm not good enough for your kingdom. This message was to bring us back to a place, and here in Kainos, to bring us back to a place where we can say, this is your calling on kindness. You have called this body to be a body that will not just minister through certain one or two, three people, but that will minister through the body. And I pray for each one today. You know that you have placed each one of us in places and positions to make a difference. My prayer is that you will open our eyes to see the opportunities. Open our ears to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit prompting us and speaking to us. Loosen our feet and our hands 
to walk and to do and to obey what you've called us to do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's take time to worship the Lord.